Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today's tutorial is kind of a mixed media tutorial. We're going to be using watercolor and gouache. We're going to be doing an underpainting. You see this beautiful pink, pinkish red color, blush tone. That's the underpainting. And then we paint on top of it with some watercolor and gouache. If you haven't tried gouache, you should try it. There's water-based gouache and there's acrylic gouache. We're going to be using water-based gouache. You can water it down like watercolor, uh, but it's more pigmented. It has a little thicker paint, some chalk in it, so it becomes opaque when it's thick without minimal water. Um, yeah, it's just a simple thing to do. I give you a reference photo for this, and I show you how we draw this in. So don't need to fret. It's pretty simple. It's just drawing this little simple road. And we're going to be using a, a sea sponge to create our little bushes and trees. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let me know if you've tried gouache, if you like gouache. I like to use different mediums. It's a lot of fun to play with. Also, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So without further ado, let's get painting this impressionistic style painting <laughs> with watercolor and gouache. All right, so I'm going to go with my supplies. I'm going to be using the Bohang um, watercolor block. Let me see if I can show you Let's put it upside down here. <laughs> um, this is the Artist Paper watercolor block from Bohang. It is 100% cotton and acid free. Uh, I think I got this on Amazon. Fairly inexpensive. Arches blocks are real expensive. I think this was like in the 20s. I think the arches are like 40s, so they're way more expensive. And this is great. Um, it comes off pretty easy. Um, you know, obviously you have to go around, you have to go in with the, like a credit card and go around all the sides and get it off that way. Or there's a tool that they sell in some art supply stores to help get off the block. Um, so this is watercolor and gouache. Uh, gouache is, I'm using the water-based gouache, not the acrylic gouache. And I love Holbein, so I'll talk about the colors as I use them, but it's a mixed media, so I'm using watercolor and gouache. You could try and do it with all watercolor, but then you're using a lot of the watercolor um, because it's not opaque, right? So the gouache is opaque. So we're doing some underpainting here with watercolor and then going over it with gouache. I give you a reference picture. I am not doing this crazy sky here. So I'm taking the reference as like an inspiration for a picture for painting something, but I'm not doing this sky. I'm doing more of a blue, blue and blue kind of thing. And I just, I don't want to do this. I, I like the picture because I liked the road and the trees, some of the flowers, but I didn't like the sky at all. So when you see if, like a photograph you take or whatever, you can embellish it. It's your photograph. Do whatever you want with it. There's no rules. So basically, you know, you just kind of scribble in where the road would go and some of the trees. You don't have to get crazy about drawing exactly as is. Like right now, I'm going to go in here and I see that the... You can see, you can make it exactly as is or make it even different. You can make this this section higher if you wanted to. And just imagine it being bigger, you know, or this one lower down here. I'm kind of, it's kind of like basically a composition that's basically your, your eye level here and you're basically in half, right? <clears throat> so you can keep it that way. Like I said, you can make it a little lower, but it's pretty interesting itself so that, you know, sometimes half, Half of the page is kind of boring, but then there's a road here, so it's a little more interesting, right? So then I'm just gonna figure here's the half line. I'm gonna be a little bit lower, going across. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just using a two two B pencil here, and the road is kind of really kind of here in the corner. Just kind of peeking through. I'm gonna move my chair a little bit. Kind of peeking. You can barely see it in here anyway. So you're just kind of scribbling in this with the pencil. And then from here, you know there's some trees up in here. These are like olive trees. I wanted to find an olive grove, but this is the closest. And then there's the main tree. It's kind of peeking through here. See, I'm just drawing the little, the little branches. There's a lot of kind of fluffy trees back here, which we could use with, I didn't mention more materials, but I'll be using a sea sponge. Ooh. I'll be using um, my Princeton 12 round Aqualite and my eight long round. Now, just to mention, and then I'll be using a flat wash brush. Um, you don't really wanna use your nice brushes, like really, really nice brushes for gouache. 
you would use like, you know, I'm constantly buying this particular brush, the number eight, and they're very really inexpensive. They're like $10 or something like that. Um, so they take the old ones and use the old ones, you know, and here I'm just kind of wiggling in and there's a tree kind of over here. And that's all you do. You just kind of put the way the road's going to going to go kind of cut off here, right? Cause there's like little bushes going on over here. You don't need to draw in every little thing. You're just kind of scribbling where the tree's going to go and where's the horizon line. So now you've kind of, you know, drawn in roughly your sketch. You can have your picture close by. Um, I'm going to do the underwash in like an orange tone. You know, you see here kind of like this kind of orangey red tone. So this underpainting is basically the painting underneath and then you build on top. This is how like the masters do it for oil or acrylic. They put all the kind of the values in with one, un like one wash of color, like, so it could be red and, and it's like the different values of the red. And then they go on top of that with the colors, right? So we're going to do something similar to that with watercolor and gouache. The sky, I'm going to keep blue. And then the underwash will be for all the green area. So I decided to do more of an orangey kind of red tone. I have, let me get this color right here. This is a great color. It's kind of an orangey red. It's this cadmium red light. I really like it. It's more of an orangey red than a red. So I'm just gonna loosen this color up a little bit. See, more of an orange red than an apple red. I might add a little yellow to it. Having yellow deep, more of an orange tone. See that? Just really water this down like a nice consistency of, you know, I would say tea. So I'm going to go across all of this, this orange color. Let me get a more red, get a little darker in some areas. So I'm taking my number 12, so it's wet on dry. We're talking about watercolor. Going across all this. Now, if you want to use a bigger brush, it might be better to use a flat wash brush. So I have a one inch flat wash brush. It goes a little faster. Um, grabbing that sucker and going faster, as you see. Meow. I could even add a little rose in there. I have a bright rose that's already over there. Why not? Going to water this down. I get a little darker where the road is because that, that color seems to be much darker. So I'm adding a little more pigment. As you can see here, of this cadmium red light, where the road's gonna be. Ooh, pretty intense. <laughs> and get a little lighter out here where the trees are. Just kind of wiggling in where that's gonna go. So I'm just twisting my brush. We will be painting over that with green. All that good stuff. Now you don't have to do your sky first. I'm doing my sky second on this one. Getting a little darker, getting a little orange, yellow kind of thing going here. You can add some more tones too if you want to add pinker tones. So I'm grabbing some pink, putting that on over here. So that's the first wash down, just throwing in this color. See, this is where all the bush trees would be. Just kind of wiggling that color around, boop, 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 twisting it around where the tree is going to be. Okay. And like I said, you can get a little darker on this road part. I might have wanted to put this area a little bit less color, so I might really lift it up by taking the brush, putting a little water on it, or you can take it with a paper towel. You can just kind of be really sneaky and grab some paper towel and kind of lift up some of the color. If you feel like you got too dark in here, a little bit dark, I'm going to grab the paper towel and just kind of lift up some of this color. I like it, but I don't want it so dark. And the road is darker. There, you can see how the road looks darker. And that's that. So we're gonna let this dry, and when we come back, we'll work on the sky, and then we'll stop painting and everything.
All right, and now that's dry, I'm gonna start working on my sky. I'm just gonna use, I like ultramarine blue or cobalt. Here's cobalt down here. Cobalt's a nice color. Just gonna get this loose and add some ultramarine blue to it too. See how nice, oh, you can't see it. <laughs> There's the blue. It's not bright enough. I don't know why this camera doesn't make it look lighter, but whatever. So grabbing more blue, fair amount. And we're going to wash in the sky. Just getting a little darker up here. I'm adding more water. And don't worry if you go over the red, because that's fine. Just going to grab this. Just going right over this. Grabbing some more blue. You really need to mix up a lot. Get this color going. And we want it to get a little darker on top. And see, don't worry about going over the color we did before. It's going to be a little purple, and that's fine. This ultramarine blue. Moving this color down in here. And I want it a little bit deeper up top, so I'm going to go back in and add some more color pigment. Get that really loose. You can kind of lift it up too, tilt it a little bit so the paint goes down. My paint is getting all over my table here. That's okay. And across. Now there are clouds in this picture, but like I said, I'm not focusing on how that picture looks. I'm gonna add a little pants gray. I'm gonna add a little pants gray up in here too. It's my blue. And a little more pigment up in here. I want it darker on top. It'll be a bright blue sky. Now, we can make our own clouds by taking paper towels and scrunching it. You see the little lines coming in my brush. Put it down. Or we can choose the brush itself and twist it by removing the paint. This is like a more natural way, lifting the brush, twisting See how I'm twisting it? And what happens is the paint folds back into the certain areas and it looks a little more natural. So now you have a nice pretty cloud. I'm lifting up paint, using the paper towel or towel we have next to you to mop it up. It just looks more natural. You could take the paper towel. It's, it's gonna soak up way more of the paint on the paper towel. But if you really want some bright areas of white, that's when you can use the paper towels. So right now I'm just kind of like putting in some smaller clouds in here. Like I said, I'm not following this picture to the T. Might follow the formation of the clouds. So I'm lifting up with my paintbrush the clouds. And then if I really, like I said, a white area of the cloud, take the paper towel and really just soak up that that paint with your paper towel. So you know it's much whiter where the paper towel goes than the other area. And you have like a more natural looking cloud. Just lift it up. And I changed the clouds from the photograph. Like I said, you don't have to follow it to a T. And that's, that works for me. And I'll put some little ones down here. Creating my own little cloud formation. Right? Looks good enough to me. Maybe I might add a little more connecting here. Yes. A little bit more up in here. And then at this point, underneath this part of the cloud, you can take, I'm gonna take my number 12 brush. You can add a little gray or deeper tones in here, blue. So I'm taking my paints gray and my ultramarine blue. Pour it down just a little bit. I don't want too much water, so I'm tapping on my paper towel here. And you kind of just tap in a little of this color underneath the bottom of those clouds. See, I'm just kind of tippy tapping the darker tone right next to it. You see how that just pops it? 
just a little bit and then somewhat in between too don't go too crazy you don't, you don't want to overdo it just a little bit see I'm just tapping a little bit of this color kind of kind of going in a line this one's dried over here so you're gonna see that more predominant if you want it just to blend nicely just little tippy taps see I'm separating them here I'm going to maneuver it a little bit more and you can put some little lines down in here that's kind of all you need to do I wouldn't go too much with this the less is more there you go with the clouds all right that's that so now we're going to begin taking some of our gouache so I've got another palette that I'm going to pull out this is an oldie buddy goodie this is like a big one you get one of these at um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, whatever store you have. It's really big. Let me zoom out a little bit. So I have a bunch of green colors from gouache. Uh, but, you know, if you have a basic green, just try with that first. Just if you want to spend a lot of money on gouache, I have cadmium green light here, which is a great one. This olive green is tried out, so <laughs> we'll be using that. Cadmium green deep. So here you can mix the colors to make the green as well. Got this nice marigold color. I love this brilliant orange color. Um, and also, or you can just buy the green itself, right? I can take some ultramarine deep and some yellow and make the green. If I didn't want to spend a lot of money on gouache and you wanted to buy like like a few colors, I always say, say get a nice, really good blue, like the peacock, similar to the watercolor, peacock blue, like the yellow, and the magenta. My magenta seems to be, oh, so it's dried out a little bit. These three and some white and black wash would be really good. And you can make a lot of colors from just these three right here. The mar well, it's marigold or just like a cadmium yellow deep. Here's a cadmium yellow deep. So cadmium yellow deep, primary magenta, peacock blue I like. Um, and you might need a Prussian blue, a deeper blue. But also black is important and white <laughs> in the gouache series. So here I'll take some peacock blue, put it right there. I'll get some permanent yellow deep. Let's take that. Ah, oh, doesn't want to come out. I'll use my marigold. See, I gotta make sure I always put the covers on these guys because they will dry out. There's the marigold, similar to cadmium yellow deep, and the magenta. Does she want to come out? <laughs> they don't want to come out on camera, right? This is when the live tutorials happens. So like I said, you don't want to use super nice brushes. So I wouldn't use super nice brushes to mix with it either also. Uh, I'm gonna go grab one of my little crappy brushes. I have one in here. And so here's the yellow. It's really intense, right? And you take some of that peacock blue, you get a nice green. You can water this down. It becomes transparent, less water, opaque. I'm gonna make a couple of greens. Um, you can take that same green, grab the yellow, so you get this chartreuse kind of color here. Chartreuse green. I'm like more of a sweet um, bluer green here. So look at this, the peacock blue. I just added a little bit of yellow and it's in this nice green. I have a teeny bit of this magenta. More yellow. See, mixing up with the blue here. Good to have a bunch of them. A little more of this blue. Oops. See, I'm not using a good brush to mix because you will wreck it. So that's fairly deep. I might add a little red. Makes it a little more brown. So we're going to use that flat wash brush, just kind of throwing in some color. Here's that medium green. What's the opposite of green? Red. So red will dull it down. 
So I got a little magenta here. Put a little bit of that in here. Turn it to more of an olive green. See how it turned into like a brown olive green? I can't really tell on this camera. It's pretty terrible lighting, I guess. I don't know. I have really good lighting. But then it's great to use some of the tubes. So I have this great cadmium green light that I'll probably be using, playing around with. And then you see in the photograph, there's all these little flowers. We'll be putting those in too at the end. Also, it'd be really good to have some smaller size flat wash brushes. I have this size and a smaller size. This is like a 3 8 inch, just a half inch, 3 fourths inch, I'm sorry. And then the one I was using before is a 1 inch. So it would just play around with more. So now we're going to just take this green, even though it's gouache, we're going to play around with mixing it and putting it down. Excuse me, I'm going to grab some more thick yellow. Watered down so it's a little more translucent. I'm just kind of kind of play around with getting these grasses in. Leaving some of that pretty pink orange tone. I'm gonna make the paint a little bit thicker. It's a little too translucent. I'm gonna grab some more of that peacock blue. Less water. Just gonna go in here like this. Leave some of that pink. See, I'm kind of still showing like the brush marks. Same thing over here. Dry brush almost. So you could try and play around with watercolor during this. I'm gonna use a little more gouache going forward. I'm still leaving some of that red orange color in the background. You can see it kind of peeking through the greens. And over in here, just this twisting, turning movement. Kind of coming in here on this road. Grab some more of this color. Now here, the trees are kind of like bushy. So you can start to just kind of go in like this, and twist and turn your brush. And same thing with the bushy ones over here. We'll get up to the tree in a bit, but we're going to do this for now. So it's just really one color we're working with right now. It's just a medium green. When it goes on that pinky color, it changes the tone a little bit. I'm just kind of twisting our brush. I'm going to build up these little trees. But I like the red, see, peeking through. I'm going to keep some of that. And go over here, just touching the page. The, pa the paper itself has a texture and a tooth to it, so it lends itself to helping you with this texture. Let's show a little bit of that red. So now I'm going to go back in. You can grab some of this bright yellow. I had that green that I talked about, which is cadmium green light a pale sorry just gonna go just a little bit of water you see that kind of throwing that in that bright green and now I'm taking that dark green that we mixed up just gonna tap again back here a tree back here just really kind of just tippy tapping leaving spaces in between that's very important and here with this one this brush I'm still using this flat wash brush just tapping the color you don't want it everywhere it's slightly dark in certain areas you could grab some magenta mix it with some of this green get even darker almost brown see how dark that gets now, I think at this point I might switch to the smaller flat wash brush. This is a 3 4 inch. I do want to grab some more blue. For, so I'm mixing some of this ultramarine blue with some of the green. Again, just kind of tapping your brush, twisting it, just really kind of lightly touching the paper. And you get that 
textural stroke. You don't have to go in too hard. So the difference between gouache and watercolor and acrylic, so the gouache is mostly opaque. So you can paint light on top of these dark colors, which we're going to do too. As you see in the photograph, this is light little sprigs of flowers going over these dark areas. So we have a tree up here. So you can use a brush and just twist it or you take a, like a nice sea sponge. Now this one's kind of big. I might have a smaller one here. You have to get a little wet. So I'm put them in water. Squeeze it out a little bit. So sea sponge is going to create a really easy natural tree. I'm just going to tap it in there and get it my paint. And look at that. Just go over there and it creates that very loose tree that we see in the side. Grabbing some more paint here. Same thing here. It's like the best friend. It creates the simplest trees. It leaves that space that most people forget how to do. Right? It's, you know, can be pretty difficult for some people to figure out how to do that. So I'm going to go back in and add some more ultramarine blue, my green, and tap in that darker tone. You could tap in some of the bushes here. Just be careful not to get it everywhere. It's a fun little tool to use. And there's some bushes going on in here. Now we're going to start to put it up in here in the tree. <clears throat> you can kind of paint in some of the trunk if you wanted to. So I'm going to grab my watercolor or you can grab the gouache, right? So make brown, excuse me, I'm making so much noise with all my paint brushes. got to find my number eight. <laughs> so, you know, we saw him make brown. Here's the green, mix in some magenta, get a nice brown. Simple as that. And have the tree in here. It kind of peeks through the green, so I'm just going to start to put in some of the branches that I see. This olive tree, kind of funky tree. Kind of twist and turn. Then I can go back in with my sponge, and then now that I know where the tree kind of goes, I can go back in with my sponge. I might start with the lighter color and just start putting in some of the the foliage. See that? Just tippy tapping. It's the best tool to make trees. Look, it already looks perfect. You want that air kind of happening in the trees. You don't want too much. You just want to lightly tap it on your paper, creating those nice little open spaces where all the leaves are. So it looks a little more natural. I'm getting this yellowish color because these are olive trees. That. And it's a little more down here. I'll go back in and tweak it with my brush. So you don't want to fuss too much. Just a simple little tree right there. I'm going to grab some yellow right on here. So take this, even this bright green here and mix it with some white. If that's going to lighten that, see how that's light? Getting the yellow. Because you're not going to get that in, you know, watercolor, you start off really light and build to the dark. With gouache, you can just take that light color, go right in there. So while we have the light color, you want double dabs on the left enhancing that dark area and the sun is shining. And you can start to play around with putting it down here in the field with the sea sponge. Just tapping in some of the darker colors. See, it already looks like the field of grasses. Tapping in that light color. I'm going to grab some yellow. Very impressionistic look you can get by using this, going this route. So you're mixing some of the greens. We can add a little ultramarine blue. See so if you add a little blue, 
it's going across the road. This is a nice use of using watercolor and gouache. So I'm taking some of the ultramarine blue and I'm making those little lines that go across as the shadows on this road. Still keeping in that bright pink, because why not? Just watering down some of the ultramarine blue and just kind of wiggling where you see the shadows. See? You don't have to really kind of change the color too much. I kind of want to keep it bright, bright back here. Maybe a couple little lines with the blue. So yes, we're using watercolor and gouache. We're playing around. Now, like I said, you could have tried this all with the watercolor itself too. So it's up to you. I'm going to wash this whole area in. I'll put some of this in here. So I'll put some nice ultramarine blue in here. A little darker. See, now it's you see the shadows. Get a little bit darker over in here with the blue on the edge of the greens. Kind of washing the color as well. So it kind of blends nicely. Right? You can take some of that blue and go right in here. Look at that. <laughs> Combination. Now I will start to put some of those nice little pretty um, sprigs of color here. I can do with the blue right on top. Experiment with your paint. See, I'm going with, back over here with ultramarine blue watercolor. <clears throat> now, here in this section, this is where you take your Princeton 8 long round. Take some nice light green color tones. We're going to do some, some yellows. And you're just going to do this little whoosh, whoosh, the grasses. Now I can add some white to it, to make it even lighter. And you can add some darker colors too. So if you want to do the dark first and then go over it with the lighter color, do that. You see all the lighter colors already coming through from the darker area that I did. That's the beauty of the gouache, right? I'm going to grab some of this blue, mix it some of this green. My green kind of melded. Ultramarine blue and the yellow makes a really kind of ugly, I want to call it ugly, but it's not a pretty, pretty blue. That's why I like the peacock. Makes a prettier blue, green. The ultramarine color is more like an olive. So you get that peacock and now it just makes it nice and pretty. So you can start to just kind of put in some nice, with a tip, little grasses, dark ones, cluster a little bit here, cluster a little bit there, not everywhere because it will look kind of goofy. You see how I cluster the darker ones here on the road. It's not going to look exactly like the picture. I'm not aiming for perfection of a photograph. This is supposed to be an expression. So here I mix that color in. This got this different color tone green. And I'm just going to do that, this little ch -ch movement. Ch -ch 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 -ch. See how I'm just doing all this little grass movement. The energy of that. The energy of me moving back and forth with the brush like this. Throwing in some dark tones. Really, you can just grab the blue. This is the ultramarine blue. Just go right in there. Get those dark tones. See? Now you're really seeing the grasses. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle this brush. Really kind of fast. Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> and the movement of the other ones too, kind of is wild, right? You can kind of put in a flat wash, like a dark green. See how I'm doing that here? Kind of like on his side. Putting a nice flat wash of this dark green. And then you could go over it with the light color. That will save you a little bit of time, right? That will dry pretty quickly. Then you take that yellowish, whitish green. Again, you're going right on top. See? It's still a little wet right here, but you can still do it. You can still see it. And then you just do those, all those crisscrossing little stems that you see in the photograph. And they can come right over, out over the road, like I showed you before, it was coming over the road. 
And here you get a little strategic with your, your crisscrossing. You know, you can see it better. Grabbing that beautiful bright green. I love to play with both the watercolor and the gouache, and this is great. So him just crisscrossing. And the, the photograph shows a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange. But trust me, if you wanted to put in red, go right ahead. It's expression. I'm going to move back in here and adding in my lovely, I'm going to get some really light colored, grabbing some more white gouache. You can really see the grasses now. See, now I'm adding a little more yellow. And we can have some peeking through over in here. Now for the purples, this beautiful magenta. You can still use a watercolor. Um, here's the magenta. Gonna mix it with some ultramarine blue. Where are you? Makes a great purple. Look at that. Can add a little white gouache. See, mix the white. Oh, pretty. And just you can tap it or you can loosen that paint a little bit. I always like to splatter it with a little brush or something underneath it. You can flick it. It's going to make tiny ones. If you want thicker ones, you got to make a thicker brush or sometimes it looks a little better with a splatter. And sometimes you can just strategically just tap real fast. All right? There's the purple ones. You see a lot of yellow in there. This yellow is a nice you can just take it right from the tube if you want, but I'm going to mix a little white with it. I don't like to keep it sometimes right from the tube. They're little white daisies, so if you really want just to put some white areas and then a yellow dot, they like yellow and white daisies. But you could just, just dot, dot. And here they kind of look like little dots up back this way. There are a whole bunch in here. Like I said, I'm just dotting it. You can just, if you really want to paint it almost like realistic, go right ahead. But you can make yourself a little nuts. So I'm just going to do some blobs here, this color, and then I'll go in and add some white as well. If I add the white kind of next to it, you see it popping. It's more like a yellow white. Just put it out there. A little flick too helps, but look how pretty that is. This doesn't take much effort. Did you see me really struggling to paint this? No. You guys can totally do this. And look at the, the color comes out. It's just so pretty. See? You can flick it. And little teeny ones back here. Be careful, don't get it all up in here, right? And then you can go back, and then go back with my color. You can use black wash, or I don't know, you can't find my black wash, but I actually have black acrylic wash. I have a color called sepia. Or you can make another brown like you did before with the magenta and the green that you had here. You go back in and fill in your tree color. Remember, they don't. You're kind of peeking through. You're not showing all the little branches. They're just kind of peeking through. If you want to add a little highlights in some areas, go right ahead. And that's that. That is a mixed media painting using watercolor and gouache. Now you can try and use it all watercolor, but because it's thick paint going on top. And I liked how we did the underpainting first. Right, and you can still see some pink coming through all these areas. All right, and then we just did a watercolor wash. And that's that. What do you think? I hope you like it. Now, see, so you can really see it's peeking through here. You could extend. I didn't do that, but you could extend going back in here. I think it's kind of pretty just to have that and not do that. But if you wanted to, just kind of go back in here, put in the grasses. Still showing that nice, pretty pink tone. It's up to you. Depends on how much grass you want to show. 
Okay. And there's that dark area. I have to cover that a little bit. Voila. So there you go. A little road. How you, you know, how you would take a photograph and not show the exact cloud that I did before. So I hope this was fun. <clears throat> and I'll show you different ways to play with gouache and watercolor. You know, um, if you haven't tried gouache, you should try it. It's one of my favorite mediums because you can kind of use it like watercolor. You can water it down and you can add the thickness of it. And you have this beautiful painting and I'm, you can make a lot of impressionistic looking paintings with it. All right, guys. I hope you enjoy this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the bell notification button if you haven't already. And take care and I'll speak to you soon.